Bang. Boom. Kablamo. I've never heard a less enthusiastic kablamo. <laughs> that was, you're right. <laughs> hey, everybody. Chris Kelly here with ProductionCrate.com. I am joined by... Adrian Jensen with ProductionCrate.com. Yeah, he works here too. Yeah. Today, we're going to show you how we made the most powerful explosion shot that we possibly could. We're going to start with a desert background image this time, but this will work on any background. You just have to make sure that instead of using sandy elements and colors like we are, you use ones that match and make sense with whatever your background is. We're gonna start with one of these new ultimate explosions. Ultimate explosions! On footagegreat.com. These are really, really, really freaking awesome. They are CGI, which means we have no weird, funky edges from King. We also have a shadow catcher, and we even have an additional pass for blending, which you just can't get with practical effects. But you can get it with these, and uh, here's how you get that additional layer. Go to footagecrate.com and search for Ultimate Explosion. Select your favorite explosion. Click on the name of that explosion, and that's going to bring you to a secondary page. At the top of that page, you're going to see a star that says Download Advanced Add-on Components, and just click that and inside that zip, you're gonna find the explosion file as well as an additional blending layer to help you blend it. That extra layer isn't really necessary for something like sand, which is non-reflective, but if you're on concrete or something, you can just drop in two copies of it and set one of them to screen and one of them to multiply, and that's gonna make it look like the explosion is reflecting really nice in the ground. But you can experiment with different blend modes and effects if you want. There's no real one correct way to do this. We're going for more of an epic slow motion look. So we're actually gonna slow this thing down a bit. Right click on the layer, find time, time stretch, and type in a number higher than 100. We went with 300 in our example. Then you just need to make sure you click the frame blending button twice. And that's gonna give us a nice interpolated blend. To give this explosion some more energy, we're gonna chop off the beginning part and then we're gonna turn that part back to normal speed. Normal and speed. <laughs> and then uh, obviously turn off the frame frame blending because we don't need it anymore. So now this explosion is looking real energetic at the very beginning, but then it slows down a lot. Let's use a levels effect to match this to the background. It's easiest to get this perfect if we go one color channel at a time. Click the show channel and color management setting button and select the red channel first. In the levels effect, also change the channel to red and move the handles around until the smoke starts to look as close to the sandy background as you can possibly get it. Now swap both the comp and the levels effect to green and do the same. Then do the blue channel and when you come back to RGB, your smoke should hopefully look pretty dang close to perfect. And you know, if it's not, it will probably be real obvious with one channel that you messed up. For example, if your smoke looks too blue, then go to the blue channel and fix that blue. Don't be blue. On the layer itself, we're gonna twirl down the effects section and under levels, we'll find a little menu called compositing options. All right, uh, so this exists on every effect but you can only find it down here on the timeline. The plus and minus signs can be used to add masks to your effects, but that's not what we're about to do. All we want to do is keyframe the effect opacity. Opa how do I say it? I mean, use you to you, man. I know I, I'm supposed to say it wrong, but I can't even remember. But now everybody anymore, expects man. you to say opacity. People are now getting mad at me for saying it right. Yeah, <laughs> you can't win. Anyway, we're going to keyframe that so that over time, <laughs> the colors of the smoke change back to the original color. We don't have to go all the way to zero, but this is just going to make it look like the explosion kicks up a whole bunch of dirt in the beginning, and then it gradually gets overtaken by actual smoke. We can accentuate this effect using some 4K dirt blasts from Footage Crate. Make sure to use the levels to color match these just like we did before, but we don't have to animate it this time because the dirt doesn't need to change into smoke. Sometimes dirt is just dirt. Words to live by. Mm -hmm. We also used some of these comp in shock waves to add a bit more dirt being pushed outwards. Any effect of footage crate that says C slash I is a comp in effect. That means it has a front and a back and we can put stuff in between them. So we're gonna tint these shockwaves dirt colors and we're gonna put one in front of the explosion and one behind because that's how you use them. Comp in, comp in, comp out. You got, you grew up with that? Yeah. 
The explosion should light up our scene a little bit when it goes off. It's an often overlooked detail, but it's gonna add a lot of believability. Let's duplicate our background footage and move it into a new comp. <laughs> we can use a CC plastic effect to add some specular highlights. Under shading, turn the ambient and the diffuse to zero and then play with the softness and the height until you get the detail you're looking for. We know it looks weird. We know it looks weird, guys. Come on. We're also getting some bumps in the sky, which is incorrect. We just want them on the ground. In our case, we could just key out the sky pretty easily, but if you can't, you can mask it using a mask. On another copy of the footage, we'll just tint it black and white and mask out the parts that would really be affected by the explosion's light and blend that in with a screen or an ad or a light in transfer mode. And then with an adjustment layer, we can tint this whole thing a pale yellow. Back in the main comp, we can just animate the opacity to be mm. bright at the start of the explosion. He's and then picked a lane, everybody. <laughs> and then we fade it out along with the fire. Overall, this should be kept subtle. Let's add a shock wave. Instead of going for a perfect dome shape, we're gonna make one that better matches the shape of our actual explosion. Because if you think about it, the same force that's causing the explosion is what's causing the shock wave, so they should be similar in shape. Duplicate the explosion and pre-compose it and then go in to that pre-comp. First, we're gonna use a simple choker to choke out all the extra bits that are flying out. They look cool, or should I say warm, but aren't necessary for this. Then we want to add a fast blur. Leave it alone for now and add a levels. On this levels, change the channel to alpha. Grab the right triangle thingy there and move it all the way to the left. You can also change the input white amount to one. It's the same deal, it's just less fun. <laughs> And you can't make sound effects. Yep. <laughs> what would yours be? The same. <laughs> the same, but worse. <laughs> Very similar. <laughs> Now on that fast blur, as we turn up the blur radius, our shape radiates out from the explosion and turns into more of a blob. So let's go ahead and animate that from zero to something, whatever number makes your shockwave big enough for your shot. Next, we want to duplicate that layer and add a fast box blur to make it softer and use it as an alpha inverted mat. Alpha mat? Nope, sorry, that joke doesn't work here, man. All right, dang it. Now we have our shockwave mat that's transparent in the middle. We only want the shockwave in the air, so not so much on the ground. So let's add a new solid and mask out the bottom. And we'll set that solid to a silhouette alpha transfer mode, which is basically making the whole comp use it as an alpha mat. Alpha mat! Nice! Cool! Yeah, yeah. alpha mat! Alpha mat! Nico, get over here! Whoa, 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 Alpha mat! Whoop, whoop! Bye. He's busy. If you want to encourage your shockwave to become more of a dome shape a bit faster, just add an adjustment layer with a bulge effect, set the center to where the ground is and make the radius real big and just animate the height to your heart's content. Back in the main comp, bu -bu 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 back in the main comp, we can put an adjustment layer below our explosion and just use the shockwaves comp as a displacement map. If your edges get messed up, just use a motion tile to fix them. Let's also grab one of those front facing shockwaves from footage crate and make that into a 3D layer and just put it on the ground. We may need to adjust the timing or scale to make it match our other shockwaves, but you know how to do that. For this explosion to feel truly powerful, the environment shouldn't be the same after it goes off. Depending on your background, it might be appropriate to add some scorch marks or some broken glass or some cracks or some debris yeah or some dragon blood because you're battling the great beast from above and you think that you had him but in the end it's you who falls for our shot, we want to add in some plants that actually react to the explosion. And you know how we did this, Adrian? Yeah. Because you were there. Yeah. <laughs> but they weren't. <laughs> we shot these practically for ultimate realism. Ultimate realism, which involves being out in thousand degree heat, God, apparently. It's so hot. The it's camera kept hot shutting down outside. and overheating. Oh, I think the camera's overheating. It turned black. <laughs> I hope this camera's comfortable. Woo! <gasps>
These are up on footage crate in the new plant section. Really glad you guys like that plant section, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. People are enjoying it. I like it too. Any of the desert plants with the word gust in the title are gonna work for us. We're gonna make these with trap code particular. So let's set up our particles first. Hey, if you don't have trap code particular, don't even freak out. Adrian made this <laughs> underwater tutorial where he used a similar technique, but no trap code particular, all After Effects internal. So check that out. I did do that, didn't I? You did. Anyway, grab one of those plants and drag it into a new composition and change the name to Plant Particle. It might be smart to decrease the resolution of the comp and it doesn't need to remain 16 by nine either. We made ours a tall rectangle. We also need to add way more frames so that we can make this comp significantly longer than our main comp with the explosion in it. Go ahead and turn on the title action save overlays and move the plant so its trunk is right in the middle of the comp and make sure it is scaled in such a way that it does not break frame. Next, we want to offset it by three seconds, and this is going to make sense later. Just move it to start at the three second mark and then enable time remapping and drag the ends to fill out the entire timeline. Yeah, so I mean, like right there, you got a little tree. It's grown from the middle of the comp and it sits still for three seconds and then suddenly it reacts to a force and then it just settles back down again. It's perfect. Yeah, it looks great. But since this is a 4K asset we're using and we're about to basically duplicate this a few hundred times. It might be smart to pre-render this right now and then import it back in so that we're dealing with hundreds of copies of something that is a much smaller resolution. And that's probably gonna save us a lot of render time in the long run. Let's make a new Pine Fresh comp that matches the <laughs> that matches the main comp exactly, except for we want it to be at least three seconds longer. This is gonna be our particular comp bring the plant particle into it and shut off its visibility. Now we need to set up our emitter, make a new solid in a square shape and go ahead and pre-comp it. Leave the attributes in this comp and open up a new composition. Use masks to make this into a semi-circular shape that looks like this. And then back in the main comp, we wanna make that a 3D layer and then animate it in such a way that it matches the speed of our shockwave. Make a new solid with particular applied and set the emitter type to layer and under layer emitter select the emitter we just made we also want to change the emitter size z to zero and the velocity to zero and the particles per second to whatever you want you may need to animate this from zero up to a higher number and back down again to get more even coverage overall but now we have an emitter covering our ground in dots Perfect, let's go home. Just kidding, under the particle settings, we change the type to a sprite. And then the sprite texture, we're gonna change to the plant particle we just made. Try adding a bit of size and rotation randomness to make this look a bit more natural. Now we have the plants being emitted in the shape of the shockwave, chilling for three seconds or so, and then reacting to the shockwave. Good, now we can drop this into the main comp and we're gonna drag the layer backwards by three seconds. And now we don't see the particles being emitted, we just see them reacting to the shockwave. Pretty neat, huh? Yes, it is. We need to add in some shadows. We can do this easy by duplicating the particular comp and changing the particle type from sprite to textured polygon, which is basically a 3D sprite. Now we just wanna lay these flat on the ground, which for us meant rotating them plus 90 on the Y axis and minus 90 on the Z axis. You might need to tweak these numbers. Look at the shadows in your background footage for reference. Bring that into the main comp under the particle plants and use a tint or fill effect to fill in whatever color shadows are in your scene. Don't just use black if you have colored shadows like we do. If your ground is bumpy, you can also use your footage as a displacement map to add a tiny bit of bump to these shadows and blur the layer a little bit if it's an overcast day. Ours is sunny, so we're gonna keep those shadows nice and sharp. This looks a bit fake because all of our plants are the same, but it doesn't have to be this way. Oh. Particular allows you to have eight systems interacting with each other on a single layer. So let's do it. We can duplicate our plant particle comp and then just alt drag in a new plant clip to replace it so that we don't have to redo all that work. And then we can make up to eight of these. Honestly, we only did five. And we can bring those all into the particular composition. In the particular effect, click the button at the top to open up the designer window. Since we're using custom emitters and particles, this is gonna be mostly useless to us, 
but we can click the arrow next to master system and select duplicate system, making one for each of our particles. Click apply and close the window. Now at the top of the particular effect, we can see all of our active systems. For each one, we'll want to change the particle texture as well as the random seed on the emitter. We can change the particles per second as well so we don't have such a uniform distribution of the plants. In our case, since it's a desert, we added a lot of dead plants and only a few green ones. Now that we have a bunch of plants in front of our explosion, getting some to go behind the explosion is gonna be super easy. Just make a duplicate of the particular comp and in that one, flip the emitter around on its Z axis, 180 degrees, easy as that. We decided to throw some birds into our background as well. There's a clip on footage crate called 4K Pigeon Flock Spooked, number one. And that's a small detail, but it really does help add more movement and life to the shot, even if you didn't really notice it. Yeah, go go use the birds. I like the birds. Chris just worked really hard on those birds. I worked on the birds for a while. For a final touch, we want to add a jolt of camera shake, which we can do with the crates camera shake script. The easiest way to do this is just to drag the whole dang comp into a new dang comp so it's <laughs> super clean and we just have one layer. We don't want this camera shake to happen right at the beginning. We actually want to scrub forward a bit until the shock wave from the explosion looks like it's about to hit the camera and we'll put the jolt there. In the script, make sure you select jolt and from the drop down list, there's several options, but they're all different versions of the same thing. Hit the button that says jolt. If you got the timing a bit wrong, you can grab the keyframes and slide them around. That's why I like the script, it's super easy to use. Lastly, we can put a little lens flare at the moment the explosion occurs. We used Null Light Factory for this, but you could also use optical flares or use the basic built-in one if that's all you have. But if you use that basic built-in one, don't use the default because everyone's gonna recognize that as a Photoshop yeah. flare, man. True. Don't forget that you can use these techniques to put epic explosions into any environment you want. We look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. If you wanna see a totally different effect with similar techniques, check out our Black Panther Shockwave tutorial. If we had the plants for that, we would've used them. True, but instead we used unicorns. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have plants, use unicorns. That's the tip for the day. My, my garden is very strange. Don't go into my backyard. <laughs> That's it for today. Make it awesome. Make it awesome.